Hey folks, yeah, I'll talk to you again today on Wednesday, the 19th of January. Here's my cup. Today it's not my usual peers. I'm having something that is, it's not Starbucks. I don't buy Starbucks, but it's like a, a morning blend and the name of the copy is something. It's an S something, but it's pretty good. Um, music today, primarily. Um, first thing I want to share is that the piece of music that I shared with you um, a few videos ago dedicated to my brother, I've uploaded that to the internet to my SoundCloud page so you can listen to it. You can't download it yet. I want to <coughs> wait <coughs> a little bit longer and finish up some more of these pieces and present, you know, a, a new album basically. Um, but uh, I'm sharing that one, and um, so on SoundCloud I'll leave the uh, I'll leave the link. <sighs> I'll go ahead and talk about this stuff first. I got a um, package uh, from Discus Music, and it just made me think here. Um, <clears throat> someone was asking about capacity in my house because I see received so many records. Actually, I don't receive that many records. There was a time when I was receiving records weekly, but it's not regular now. The main <clears throat> stuff that I get regularly is um, from Discus Music and um, and a few folks, um, people who want to, stuff to be reviewed. It's not a river right now, and that's fine, actually. That's fine. But I got the late... Uh, two new discs from um, Discus, and I can talk about one, I want, even though I've only played it once partially. I already know that I want to tell you about this. Nick Robinson, a guitarist, Lost Garden. I really like the way that Discus is presenting these CDs and they're they're really I also pardon me I'm, I just woke up so I'm I'll be saying like, really really okay I'll stop <laughs> I like how they do that with some of their um this they do kind of like mock-ups of old um labels and that looks to me like um a mock-up of the immediate label Nick I is also a member of Das Rod with Martin Archer. This is their latest, which is quite good. I want to recommend the label. And he's also on the scale, Kawa's album. And um, what needs to be said, first off, you know, to cover the label is that Discus Music is a quality label focused on real artistry and music um, it's, a, it's like there's a it seems like there's a uh, core group of musicians that are represented and it's a high it's a high level of um, artistry going on on the label this is music for deep listening and um it's not light entertainment. I like both, but I really like good, deep listening material. So that's why I can give a first impression on the Nick Robinson. My first impression was very, very good. And I was, I was drawn into it immediately. I posted a um, online about this and I said, guitarscapes musical shapes um, just in the first three pieces here he goes through a it's like a presentation of approaches to the guitar timbres textures and literally um, inner landscapes that are that are suggested by the sounds that Nick is getting out of the guitar. Besides his work with Martin Archer, um, I was uh, 
interested to see in the one sheet that apparently he's done some work with the Comset Angels. Um, I don't see um, his name in the correct, well, I didn't really, really look deeply, but I love the Comset Angels have a lot of their records. And this is good. The other thing I want to say about this is that this is the sort of thing that people who think, who say they're into progressive music, this is what you, this is what you're looking for. And also for people who are of a jazz mentality, this is what you're looking for. Ambient music, definitely. This is there. And um, it just shines a light, again, on the excellence overall of what Martin Archer and the people at um, Discus are doing. Nick's on both of these, and I like both of these. I'm really drawn to the Carla. You know, it's it's more than the fact that she's a, a friend that I haven't actually met, but I feel in my heart. This is um, an expression that I think we need. This is very modern to me. Uh, this is really... Hats off to you, Carla, Martin, and Nick, and the rest of the band on this one. And uh, I really like this. I really like this. I'll go ahead and give a first impression here because it's better than none. I hope to get back to it. But I received another um, disc from Fourth Dimension Records. Richard, thank you. Clistoir, in the guts of a year. Now, I just started to, to play this, but what I got to tell you is that it drew me in. It got me listening right away. Clistoir is the work of... Um, the guy that used to be Ramla, and he was also in the band Breathless. I don't have Ramla or that sort of that stuff anymore. That's kind of the dark industrial. I guess you could call it that. Um, I really don't listen to stuff like that anymore. But this is um, a snapshot of this person's. That's what it was as well say. This is an expression of a view of the world which is unflinching. And so the first piece, which is the one that I can comment on, it, uh, it was strong. It's uh, like a sound field. Um, I'd have to play this again. I couldn't even tell you what I was hearing on the first track, but it was drawing me in. It wasn't that it was dark. It was more like it was... Um, just really direct. I have a feeling I'm going to get into this. Cleast bar, but I want to go ahead and mention it. And thank Richard for sending this to me. And interesting, this fellow's background. Very cool. Okay. So here's um, so, a little bit of Dear Diary. My intention is to finished up the Dave Newhouse track today and get that up to him. My time in the studio yesterday with Dave Nance Band was magical. It was a wonderful day. It was beautiful. Um, and we um, worked on a couple things and we redid a couple songs. Um, one is a song that David Nance wrote about his younger sister who passed away when they were kids. That's a tough thing to process, you know. And um, we've done the song before. To me, I, I told him that I think this is a great song. It reminds, it reminds me musically of George Harrison. And uh, so we did it several times yesterday, and we got a version, which I think you'll hear. It brought me to tears spontaneously. David's, we were playing it live in the studio um, acoustically. And David's vocal performance on this particular take was so vulnerable it was just so real that's like I was saying yesterday I may not listen to some of the music that you folks really want me to like but if I experience it live or say if I were to play the music with those people it'd be different and one of those that comes to mind is Robert Pollard and Guided by Voices Guided by Voices are very popular and well-loved by their fans. 
I know why, and I kind of like some Guided by Voices, but not enough to buy them. I've got a Pollard solo CD, but if I played with them, I can tell that it'd be a different feeling. Sharing the magic always makes a difference. It does. It really does. <clears throat> Somewhat related to um, the Dave Nance group is this. From Lincoln, Nebraska, the show is The Rainbow. Who of you guys know about this artist? Darren Wayne Keen. What's the name of this album? It's a funny name. Gym Gymnasia. Darren Keene is a real character from Nebraska. Back in the 2000s, he toured the world with his crazy, crazy act and his music. He's a large, red-headed guy who takes his clothes off and will just do some crazy shit. You, you know, he's a character. You know, he is. He's, a, he's the real deal. So I was listening to this last night. I forgot that it's this cool-looking vinyl. I've had this for a long time that I got that, that, that Darren gave me, and last night was really the first time I gave it a serious listen. And first off, on a talent level, on a musical and um, arrangement level, and use of electronics level, this album is very, very interesting and really good. Man, Darren, Darren is a very talented musician. He can play all the instruments. He can play um, to a degree a slightly virtuosic on the guitar. I mean, he can play difficult shit, and he can play, he can play all the instruments. Plus, his programming with electronics is is beyond me. I'm giving him credit. But Jim Schroeder from the David Nance Band was uh, with Shores Rainbow for a long time. This is really good. Um, besides his personality which he's screaming about throughout the uh, entire record which you can take or leave it was kind of one of the things about his act that I never got into I've always been into his uh, level of um, artistry he's very good he can really play I actually tried to oh, see we tried to start a band I tried to start a band with Darren Keene and Luke Polipnik an amazing jazz guitarist also well he's from Minneapolis but that was really difficult you know because we all three of us have really strong personalities and um, I think if we had had time we could have put something together but it was really hard because <laughs> we're such strong personalities but that's one I'd encourage you to look up if it sounds interesting to you After relaxing in the stu after, after rela relaxing last night after the studio, which was just a wonderful day, um, Jim Schroeder's uh, um, uh, girlfriend, common law my wife, I'd call. Uh, she's a wonderful lady. She made she made a meal for us. Oh man, we just had so many laughs. We just laughed and laughed about stuff. To me. It's not worth it to play music with people I don't like. It is about camaraderie and about a sense of um, uh, union that we're, do we're creating something together. I don't like working with people I don't like. I know there's a whole school of thought that says it doesn't matter. Just make the music. I'm not in that school. Okay. Gracious. This is an album goes back to the 70s. This is a reissue because I've never been able to find a copy once I was able to, looking for it that I could afford. English band, a whole lot of Mellotron on here. Um, hints at Christianity, but not. This is really good. Prog rock. People that are like, you like Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer, Yes, Genesis, Focus, all that stuff. You, you haven't heard Gracious? You're missing it. This is, this is a great prog album. Here's an album I haven't played in ages, and it's one of the first records I got on the BYG, the big label. I, I collect this label, Big Actuel, out of France. I believe Giorgio Gomelski, the guy behind uh, the Yardbirds gong, and many people call him a rip-off artist, but he was just typical manager of those days. I think he was behind the forming of this label. Glad it happened. Even though... Legally, 
many people on this label have never made a dime off of it. Some really wonderful music came out of this, and that's not an uncommon thing in the business. Unfortunately, some people who don't know try to think that certain people are more victimized than others. Than others. I can tell you stories myself about going online in the early um, 2000s and finding my music for sale on sites out of Russia. You know, they have to try to get a hold of these people and say, hey, this isn't your music. Happens to people all the time. Uh, Jakob Kuhn, a pianist. I think he's from the Czech Republic, possibly. This is his first album, that I understand, and this is really wonderful. They they put it under free jazz, but it's only partially free jazz. There's also rock in a jazz setting on here. In 1969, with an acoustic piano, he rocks besides playing jazz. Aldo Romano on drums. It's really good. It's really good. I want to uh, just keep the... Um, Keep it on the surface that this is real, the inter the interaction between us is real, and that, you know, there's a consistency here, you know, so come to come to this page respectfully. You see what I'm saying? It's because it's mutual. We're trying to raise the bar. That I'm gonna say it. We I'm gonna say it. I'm I'd like to encourage us as humans to raise the bar. I'm not excusing my humanness. I'm saying that's part of it, but I'm working on it, okay? So the idea that someone will say, well, you said this and you said that, and that seems hypocritical, bullshit. Bullshit. I'm working on my shit, and the, the fact that other folks, that's the first thing you would have to say to me or someone, means that your shit is really stinky and you aren't paying attention. And people need this message, okay, because I'm talking to myself as well. That's the other thing, why it's potent is because the message is for me as much as anyone else. And I'm getting it. I do need to be a decent person and work on how I live and treat people. And part of that is not taking shit from idiots. And um, I will be human about it. I can be very politically correct and not call people idiots and not say things that might trigger folks, but that's just too bad, you know, this, this is the world we live in, you know, um, we, things are really bad, every time I turn on the radio, it's an absolute chaotic mess how we're handling um, the pandemic, we're not handling it, and we're at the point now where um, officials are saying, well, the sacrifice you know, especially they're saying about the kids, and I don't know what to think. I'm glad my the kids that I helped raise are grown. But it's like they're basically throwing them under the bus, it sounds like. It says, well, the kids are suffering more from the um, lack of social interaction and the structure of school, and that that may be more dangerous than the virus itself. I don't know what to say. I don't know. But that's where we're at, that, you know, the whole concern is, we can't let the economy crash because of COVID. Well, we don't have to, you know, but I'll tell you what, and it's just not going to be heard, but those folks at the top on those boards, they could get their heads together and they could make some changes and help us get through this by stop, by putting on hold their incessant need for um, increased profits. That's a big problem with how we're not handling this pandemic. So I wanted to share that. Mm. And I did go ahead yesterday and um, order my um, home test. Okay. Uh, I'd like to know. Okay. And I'll put this out. It's like, for folks who are still dealing with people in your lives who are full of nonsense saying things that they believe that has no bearing on reality, they have no facts, they have no experience, but they've allowed them, their minds to be polluted by politics and division. And they'll say some stupid shit about, I did not test freedom this. Well, 
you don't know nothing. So why would why would I listen to you? You have not nothing but this bullshit in your head. And I'll keep sharing that, that we live in the mind. So when people come along and they try to just slime me or you, they're just telling me, hey, buddy, I got a problem. Thought I'd tell you about it. <laughs> but I know the problem isn't me. It's important, people. I know there's people, I know there's many of you out there that you're dealing with shit and you think you're the problem and maybe you are. So if you are, then that's work for you. But I bet there's a lot of you where people treat you like you're the problem and they're the problem. Stand up, people. Use your, use your wisdom.